He was a monster. He hunted human beings. This killer has baffled the police, and nobody can solve his cryptic code. The Zodiac Killer, America's most infamous unidentified serial killer. Gets chopped up for no reason at all. Zodiac claims 37 victims. Seen only in glimpses. You're pretty much on the verge of finding this man. Well, I wouldn't want to say that. Heard only in his taunting letters. He is killing just for the thrill. He said he hid his name in his coat. A bizarre set of letters and symbols that has beaten every attempt to decode it. Look at this, look at this. Until now. Two top investigators. You gotta get dirty to do this job. You gotta get down and dirty. With unprecedented access to police files. That puts a whole other spin on this case. Kevin, I don't think this was an empty threat. Will feed clues and leads to an all-star team of code breakers. It's possible Zodiac is still out there. Armed with a supercomputer programmed to break the code by thinking like the killer. Anytime we press that enter key, we might see the solution on the other end. If this is Zodiac, it is monumental. New evidence. That could be Zodiac's DNA. New witnesses. Was this guy a military? Yeah. He loved to kill things. And the cooperation of law enforcement and the FBI. Well, that could be a game changer. Holy s***. He's talking about building an explosive. Crack the code? Can. We got a hit. Find the Zodiac killer. Boom. I've cracked the Zodiac 340 cipher. This is the biggest breakthrough in cryptology in the last 50 years. Fifty miles outside of Los Angeles, two veteran detectives make their way to Riverside, California. Ground zero in their hunt for a twisted killer who has eluded police for 50 years. Sal La Barbera earned the nickname LA Murder Cop after working more than 6,000 homicide cases in his decorated 35-year LAPD career. I was in every night on homicide. Patrol cops thought I lived at the station. But you have to treat each and every case like it was your own family member. You don't stop. You gotta walk it, breathe it, taste it, even if it's 50 years later. Sal's partner is former FBI task force member Ken Maines, a renowned cold case expert. We never call them cold cases, we call them unsolved homicides, because they're never cold. They're one lead away from being solved. Out of all the cases that I've looked at, this is the most cold-blooded. They weren't raped, they weren't robbed, they were just killed. The Zodiac is among history's most ruthless killers. A genius who, between 1968 and 1970, terrorized the people of Northern California with his gruesome crimes, leaving seven victims in his wake. This guy is a pathological, uh, psycho uh, killer. The Zodiac's legend grew with each horrific killing, making headlines across the country. Real nice college kids just stabbed for no reason at all. Police have investigated hundreds of suspects, but Zodiac's identity remains unknown. Zodiac has a huge advantage here. All that we have to go on is this vague physical description. There's no scars, there's no tattoos, there's no marks, there's nothing outstanding. Six foot two, 200 pounds, stocky build, ghost. These serial killers, I mean, they usually leave something or take something from each crime scene. With Zodiac, he sent letters. I mean, that's sick. The Zodiac's reign of terror extended way beyond his immediate victims. He sent dozens of letters to the press, promising constant death and destruction. In a letter to the San Francisco Chronicle, he wrote, I think I shall wipe out a school bus some morning. Just shoot out the front tire and then pick off the kitties as they come bouncing out. Is, is the Zodiac killer, is he smarter than us? Don't know, but if we can be able to break those codes, I really believe we can solve these cases. Zodiac's ultimate taunt four mysterious coded messages sent to the press. 
including his crown jewel, the holy grail of unbroken ciphers, the Z340, a grid of bizarre symbols that has stumped the NSA, FBI, and CIA for decades, but if broken, is believed to reveal the Zodiac's name. 1966 murder, Sherry Joe Bates. Take a small place like Riverside, sometimes they just can't believe it. There's no way it can be related to Zodiac. Yes. It's impossible because that doesn't happen here. Well, you know what? It could happen. Absolutely. As terrifying as Zodiac's official rap sheet was, in reality, he may have been even deadlier. This guy is just a killer and you have no motive. Beyond the seven confirmed Zodiac victims in Northern California between 1968 and 1970, in his letters, he claimed a total of 37. The most terrifying, a note sent to the LA Times taking responsibility for the brutal slaying of Sherry Joe Bates in Riverside, California in 1966, which would mean the Zodiac's homicidal rampage extended 400 miles south and two years earlier than officially believed. If they can prove that Riverside was an early Zodiac kill, it could reveal his origins and his identity. He was not experienced yet, which means he makes mistakes. One piece of evidence could unravel this whole investigation. Sal and Ken walked the Riverside City College crime scene with retired homicide detective Steve Shumway, who worked the case in the late 90s. The landscape here of the college has changed drastically since 1966. October 30th, Sherry came to this library. She left a note for her father, said, Dad, I'm going to be at the library studying. And they closed at 9 o'clock, and uh, she left shortly after 9. I've been told that that's a picture of Sherry Jo Bates. Have you seen that before? Uh, I've seen it, but yes. It's kind of eerie. If it, it is her and we're right standing here. here, you know what I mean? It is. This is where Sherry Jo Bates walked out to go to her car after the library closed. This is where her car was parked, right here. It was definitely disabled by somebody? Definitely, yes. Okay. The distributor cap was removed. We believe that Sherry was contacted by somebody that uh, offered to help fix her car. But we believe that it was the person that disabled her car. We think he was lying in wait, watching her the whole time. Is disabling the victim's car the first compelling link between the Sherry Joe Bates murder and Zodiac? Four years after the Riverside murder, Kathleen Johns and her infant daughter were abducted by a man who disabled their car on a desolate highway. He was later identified as the Zodiac Killer. In the same way, Sherry Jo Bates, she was stalked. Her car was disabled. He controlled her. That's just what Zodiac did. Right here, Sherry Jo Bates' body was found. In 1966, there was a dirt alleyway in the area where we're standing, and she was stabbed numerous times. In a nearly identical manner, the Zodiac savagely attacked a young couple in Lake Berryessa, California in July 1969, stabbing them 16 times with a foot-long knife. On this picture here, we're looking at that roadway, alleyway where Sherry Jo Bates' body was found, where we're standing. Yes. And I see two houses. At the time, in 1966, nobody was living in these homes. I guess my question would be, why would anybody kill somebody in this alleyway with two homes on each side unless they knew they were vacant? So our perpetrator knew his way around the campus. Did you get any good feelings on any good suspects? Yes, but uh, I, I can't release it. We've kept that evidence pretty close uh, to the vest in our investigation. Riverside has been so tight-lipped about this case. Any police agency would want to separate themselves from a serial killer. But you know what? There's a connection. We can solve Riverside's case. We could solve Zodiac. Hey, child, this is Kevin. I'm going to send you photographs and notes from that crime scene, stuff that I know you may be interested in working these codes. All right, thanks, Sal. So let's start with the symbols in the known Zodiac ciphers. The other half of the Zodiac team are some of the top code-breaking minds in the country. 
They'll be using clues uncovered in the field to try and crack the killer's mystifying ciphers. Many of the symbols are A, B, C, D, or backwards written letters, but many of them are kind of uh, unconventional. Kevin Knight, USC professor of computer science, leads the team. He's one of the world's most respected codebreakers, responsible for solving the Copial cipher, which had been unbreakable for 260 years. When I was 15 years old, I got these code-making, code-breaking books. And just the process of going down blind alleys until suddenly complete gibberish turns into plain English, it's for sure my favorite thing in the world. Our mission here is to solve the 340 cipher. The Z340 is one of the top three unsolved ciphers in the world the Zodiac Killer. He's basically taunting us. But luckily, we have a secret weapon. For the first time, a computer is being trained to think like a ruthless killer. This is Carmel. Its complex artificial intelligence software allows it to learn, and in this case, break codes. The key to breaking a code is knowing the words and phrases the code writer might have used. That's how Allied code breakers solved the world-famous Nazi enigma during World War II. Once they knew the words Heil Hitler would be found somewhere in the Nazi encrypted messages, they were able to identify that phrase and topple the larger code. Any new clues Sal and Ken learn about the Zodiac Killer will be fed by Kevin and his code team into Carmel. If, for example, the Zodiac knew Chinese, Carmel can learn the entire Chinese language and apply it to unraveling the Zodiac's Z340. We're going to tell Carmel, first of all, here's all the letters of the English alphabet. We're going to tell her, here's all the symbols found in the Zodiac 340. Over a period of weeks, Kevin has been inputting every known piece of information about the Zodiac, including evidence from the Riverside crime scene, into Carmel. Now it's time to unleash their supercomputer on the infamous cipher. Let's see what it comes up with. This guy is a pathological or a psycho. That's not the worst I've seen. The kids just chopped up, just stabbed for no reason at all. Who has baffled the police and baffled the media, and then nobody can solve his cryptic code. This looks interesting. Now that we've set this up, we can start Carmel. Let's see what it comes up with. Kevin Knight and his elite team of codebreakers are attempting to crack the Zodiac's infamous Z340 cipher, which is believed to hide the killer's identity. With the help of information from the field team, they've programmed their supercomputer Carmel to become a virtual version of the Zodiac killer's brain. Carmel has been locked in a head-to-head -head battle with the unbreakable 50-year-old code, probing for weaknesses. Oh, oh there we go. something. That's weird. There's two of them right next to each other. The interesting thing is that we have the trigram R, J, and I repeating next to itself, but in a different direction. Same thing is happening right next door. This reversal of the three letters don't seem to be an accident. It's a one in a million chance that we would see such a thing. Everyone's expecting it to read like normal English, from left to right, from top to bottom. But he may have flipped the message around, rearranged the rows. So far, to solve the 340, what we've built into Carmela is a big assumption that the text was written left to right, top to bottom, just like we all write English text. What if the Zodiac Killer didn't write it that way? Maybe it's written in a box style pattern or a spiraling type pattern. It's going to be very important for us to try to figure out what could he have done that would cause these clues to appear in the ciphertext. If we can figure that out, maybe we can uncover what the message is. There's so much fog in this cipher that anytime we can see some sort of pattern there, it's like light. And that's super exciting. If Sal and Ken can give us more information about the Zodiac Killer's background, then we can reprogram Carmel to solve this thing. Renowned LAPD homicide detective Sal La Barbera and cold case expert Ken Maines have focused their investigation 400 miles south and two years earlier than the confirmed Zodiac killings. With the 1966 murder of Sherry Jo Bates in Riverside, California, they have uncovered eerie similarities to the Zodiac, including the manner in which the killer stalked his victim, used a knife, 
and disabled her car. Riverside has never allowed anyone from the outside to look at their case, to look at the evidence, to look at the reports. Sal takes a closed door, no cameras allowed meeting with Chief of Police Sergio G. Diaz. Getting inside the Riverside evidence locker means access to crime scene materials never seen by outside agencies and possible clues to the method and mistakes of a young serial killer. Interest in Zodiac, subsequently interest in Sergio Bates, may be subject to some exploitation. I come to you thinking about the integrity of the case. You know, with a fresh set of eyes, maybe I can help your detectives. This isn't something we normally do. I don't think we've ever done it, frankly, not in this case or any other. But I trust you. I'm going to let you talk to Detective Jim Simons, who's the active investigator on the case. I have so much respect for the law enforcement community, and I have been in the same position. I've had to hold cases close to the vest, but we all have the same goal, solving the case. I can get you guys to sign in for me. Sal meets with Detective Jim Simons, who has overseen the Sherry Joe Bates case since 2010. We can go through the evidence that we have stored back there. Sal is the first outside detective allowed access to the evidence locker. These 50-year-old boxes contain material never seen by the public. At the crime scene, there was the impression of a shoe. This is the heel impression believed to have been left by the suspect. And back in 1966, they were able to determine the make manufacturer, B.F. Goodridge, and uh, B.F. Goodridge determined that this specific shoe was issued right. to the military. The military boot prints left at the scene, signature Zodiac. These boot prints are the same type of boot prints that were discovered up north. In 1969, two college students were picnicking on the shore of Lake Berryessa in Northern California. They were attacked by a man wearing a black hood emblazoned with a strange symbol, the infamous Zodiac crosshairs. The hooded man bound them with clothesline and stabbed them 16 times, leaving behind a key piece of evidence, a footprint from a combat boot distributed to military personnel, another compelling link between the Zodiac and the Riverside slang. These are the original letters we received back in 1966. In an almost identical manner to the Zodiac Killer, one month after Sherry Jo Bates' murder, Riverside Press received this typed confession letter. The author describes specific details of the killing never released to the public. Six months later, the same hand that stabbed Sherry Jo Bates scrawled these chilling notes to her family, the local newspaper, and Riverside Police. And this says, Bates had to die, there will be more. And at the bottom, this is interesting. It's signed by Z. This one has the same Z at the end. This was two years before Zodiac's first writings. Maybe this was just the beginning. We have Sherry Jo Bates' clothes, uh, fingernail clippings, hair fiber, things like that. Detective Simons won't reveal Riverside's prime suspect but he agrees to provide Sal crime scene evidence for DNA analysis. Knowing that it's a 50-year-old case, we have the resources to do a lot more than any police department can. The Sherry Joe Bates evidence was last tested for DNA in 1999 with no success. But with access to state-of-the-art DNA technology, Sal could change that. If he is able to extract DNA of the killer, he could compare it to known samples from Zodiac killings in Northern California as well as submit it to Parabon Nano Labs in Virginia. Parabon's revolutionary forensic analysis can recreate the physical appearance of a person based purely on DNA, potentially revealing the face of the Zodiac Killer. DNA doesn't lie. Cases that are 50, 60 years old have been solved by DNA. That suspect's going to jail, and that suspect will be held accountable. Sal and Ken have uncovered links between the gruesome murder of Sherry Jo Bates in 1966 in Riverside, California, and the Zodiac killings two years later. Both killers stalked their victims, used a knife, disabled their cars, sent taunting letters to the press, and left military boot prints at the crime scenes. Could they be the same person? Let's see what we find from October 66. 
Sal and Ken focus on uncovering the name of a suspect that the Riverside Police Department insists on keeping confidential. You got a murder that's 50 years old, and you're still holding stuff close to your chest. What I want to say to that detective is, how's that working out for you, buddy? Because it's still unsolved. It always has to be about solving the case, always. So I'm going to find another way around it. They scour online archives of newspaper articles and open source documents. Link Zodiac to unsolved deaths. Zodiac has claimed the murder on the campus of Riverside City College of co-ed Sherry Joe Bates. Where is this published from? Uh, Times Herald. Here's another one. But this one's for the... Yeah, Times Herald. Hold on, let me go back. That's by a guy named Dave Peterson. According to this, I mean, hell, that's like 11 articles that was all Dave Peterson. It mentions Riverside police finding clues, finger and palm prints on the side of the car, the shoe sold through military outlets. That's not something you would think they would have released to the public. Dave Peterson wrote a bunch of articles on Zodiac, and he seems to have a lot of insider information that only law enforcement would know. This guy could fill in all sorts of gaps for us. The interesting thing is that we have RJ and I repeating next to itself, but in a different direction. Sal and Ken have provided Kevin and the code team with the Riverside Killer's writings and confession letter, potentially valuable information in programming their Carmel supercomputer to think like the Zodiac. The more information they can feed Carmel about who the Zodiac might have been, the more it can think like the killer and crack his code. Now Kevin and the code team examine the Riverside Killer's writings for links to the Zodiac that could help them in programming Carmel. The more we know about the killer, what his thoughts are, what words he would use specifically, the more we can direct Carmel's search for a solution to the 340. If the Riverside Killer and the Zodiac Killer are the same person, he's going to draw from the same vocabulary he's been using in all his taunting letters. All right, so here we have the Riverside confession. She was young and beautiful, but now she is battered and dead. I am not sick, I am insane but that will not stop the game. This letter should be published for all to read it. Beware, I am stalking your girls now. This letter is interesting because it reminds me of what Zodiac did with his letters. He sent them to reporters, and this letter was sent to reporters as well. I have an idea. If he wanted to actually automate this, I have an OCR program that I wrote we can ingest this letter and then compare it to all the known letters from Zodiac, and then we can actually try to automatically find patterns in them. OCR, or optical character recognition software, scans images and turns them into searchable text, so the team can look for keywords or phrases shared between the 1966 Riverside Confession letter and the dozens of Zodiac writings released years later. Let's see what kind of matches we get. Wow, so it actually found a match. The first pattern it actually found is this reference to the word game from the original Zodiac 408 letter. Game's kind of a common word in English, but he does use it in the same way, so they refer to the game of killing people in both the Riverside letters and the Zodiac letter. Zodiac also sent a postcard where the word game was actually mentioned. Interesting found two more patterns, the word twitch and squirm. This is from the 1970 letter that was sent to the San Francisco Chronicle. Some I shall tie over ant hills and watch them scream plus twitch and squirm. Whoever wrote the Riverside confession letter references twitched and squirmed. She squirmed and shook as I choked her and her lips twitched. More importantly, the word twitch is actually missing a T in both letters. It's sort of uncanny that both these letters actually would have the same set of words. And both be misspelled, right? The fact that these low-frequency words appear in both writings and have the same misspelling, this is a huge find. The statistical chances of the same word randomly being misspelled in the exact same way in two separate writings from two separate people three years apart is less than one in 1.5 million. That seems to me to be as close to a fingerprint as, as, as we may get on this. Remember, the confession letter came out in 1966, but the first Zodiac letter was not received by anyone until July 31st, 1969. So there's no way the Riverside Killer could have been a copycat of Zodiac. 
Can't be a coincidence. If there's files here about Riverside, especially police reports, we need to see them. Sal and Ken have uncovered multiple links between the 1966 murder of Sherry Jo Bates in Riverside, California, and the Zodiac killings, which would begin two years later. The most striking, a letter written by Bates's killer that is a one in 1.5 million statistical match with those of the Zodiac. With the Riverside police unwilling to share information on their suspect, Sal and Ken arrive in Sonoma, California to examine investigative reporter Dave Peterson's files. Although Dave passed away in 2001, his nephew is believed to have kept all of his work. This should be coming up here on the right. Dave Peterson was obsessed with Zodiac. And Patrick Collins has all of Mr. Peterson's work. The reporters, they're not bound by the same rules the police department is. Oftentimes, they talk to witnesses, they talk to suspects. They're looking for a story. So these documents could be more valuable than the police reports. I see a box. It says Zodiac on it. One, two, There's another three. one. There's another one. These boxes are all from your uncle? Yeah. This is the first time anybody's gone through it. OK, well, let's start with one and Okay. Go. Peterson wrote dozens of articles on the link between Zodiac and Sherry Jo Bates' murder. These boxes contain hundreds of files, personal notes, and never-before-seen police documents. One of them could hold the answer to Zodiac's identity. Well, we know Zodiac was a bigger man from various victims and witnesses, 250 pounds, heavy set. So my mission today is to sit down, go through those boxes, looking for a suspect that fits our profile. I just saw Sherry Joe Bates' name. This is a letter from Dave Toshi to Dave Peterson. San Francisco PD detective David Toski took over the Zodiac case in 1969 after the slaying of cab driver Paul Stein. Toski, now 86, is reportedly still haunted by his failure to solve the case. He's mentioning Riverside and mentioning Ross Sullivan. Here's Ross Sullivan again. White male, date of birth, 72841, six foot two, 250 to 300 pounds. Blonde hair, blue eyes. I'm seeing things that stick out to me. Heavy set, 200, 250 pounds, six foot, six foot three. Um, that, that is the general description of Zodiac. Well, I'm gonna guess that's Ross Sullivan because he looks like the freaking Zodiac. Ross Sullivan. This is a newspaper clipping of Ross Sullivan being arrested for some bizarre behavior on Santa Cruz 35 of 68. So Ross Sullivan is in Northern California two years after the Sherry Joe Bates homicide. This is really the area the first Zodiac would have occurred. That's significant. Yeah. Attended RCC, worked library. Well, that's interesting. Ross Sullivan went to school with Sherry Jo Bates, and he worked at the last place that Sherry Jo Bates was seen alive, at the library. Looking at what Peterson uncovered, Sullivan jumps out all over the place. I mean, he fits the profile. Since 1968, hundreds of suspects have been connected to the Zodiac mystery, including Ross Sullivan. But never has he been linked to the evidence in this way. Sal and Ken can definitively place Sullivan in Riverside, California, at the time of Sherry Jo Bates' murder. Then in Santa Cruz in Northern California in March 1968, the exact area that the confirmed Zodiac killings began eight months later. In this note that Peterson wrote, he said that Ross Sullivan was an English student and submitted a research paper on cryptology. To me, that is huge. The code team can now look into his background, see what training he had, see if that mind frame matches any of the Zodiac ciphers. We got a lead that we got to follow up on there. Right now, he's the number one suspect for Sherry Joe Bates' murder. Could Ross Sullivan be the Zodiac killer? A week into the investigation, Sal and Ken return to Riverside with new leads and a prime suspect. There's no stopping when you're working homicide. I mean, I sleep two, three hours at best. It reminds me of this phrase from Dr. Seuss. I mean, if you want to catch beasts that you don't see every day, you have to go to places that are out of the way. You have to go to places no others can get to. You have to get cold. 
and you have to get wet too. The next morning, the team arranges to meet with Barbara Van Tommy, who worked with their suspect, Ross Sullivan, at the Riverside City College Library, the last place Sherry Jo Bates was seen alive. In 1968, Sullivan moved to Northern California just months before the confirmed Zodiac killings began in that area. He fits the physical description of the Zodiac and took cryptology classes. Good afternoon. Hi there. How are you? Barbara. Oh, hey. Very nice Ken Maines. Nice, nice to meet you. you. We're here, uh, part of an investigation into the Sherry Joe Bates murder. I understand you were working here yes. then at the time? I started in 64, but I was a, also a student. Now, the area where the old library is, do you remember those old structures were there? Do you mean the houses? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. We used them for our overloads of uh, books. That's interesting. So somebody that worked here would know that building and maybe would go back and forth? Yeah, okay. definitely. You have to wonder, did Ross Sullivan lead Sherry Jo down that little dirt way in order to kill her because he knew that he had two vacant houses on each side? Well, you would probably know a gentleman, Ross Sullivan. I have a picture of him in my mind. Is that the person that you think is Ross or is this the individual that that worked here? Yeah. Do you know if he had any girlfriends or close friends or anything out of the ordinary? He was very quiet. I never felt at ease around him anyway, just uh, so I did have a, a just, it just he wasn't friendly. After the homicide had occurred and you had come to school the next morning, do you know if Ross had showed up for, for work or school that day? We noticed that he was not there, and I... Was there rumors or speculation? Well, the reference librarian, Joanne Bailey, she brought up Ross, wondering if Ross was a suspect. Do you know why she brought that name up? I guess in her mind, she he, he just, you know, struck okay. a little nerve to, with her because of his demeanor. It's one thing to see Ross Sullivan's name in Peterson's files, but to hear that the library staff was openly speculating that Ross Sullivan was the suspect in the Sherry Joe Bates murder, it's shocking. Do you remember his attire, his typical clothing? How did he dress? Like an army jacket, a long, one of the long army jackets, and um, uh, the big army boots, mostly every, every day. When I was talking to Detective Simons, we spoke of the boot prints left at the scene. These boot prints were that of military style boots. It matches the same kind of boot prints left behind by the Zodiac. Is there materials or books that go back to 1966 or? We have a lot of archives. In 2003, the library destroyed all records of books checked out prior to 1980. Let's check out this section. Sal and Ken manually searched the stacks for cryptology books that would have been available at the time of the murder. Well, 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 what do we got here? Cryptology. This one's from 1956, so this is a possibility. It's beginning crypto. I mean, it's a good possibility. He sat right here, reading these the exact same books that we got our hands on, which is very eerie. If Ross Sullivan is the Zodiac and used these books to learn code writing, they could be key to unraveling the killer's ciphers. Barbara, are there any archives as far as, you know, Sherry Joe Bates' homicide? We have a, a, a packet, uh, the Sherry Joe happenings. I'd love to see that, yeah. Okay. There's Joanne Bailey. Why did she suspect Ross? Okay, this may be big. It's a letter written by Joanne Bailey in the archive folder. There are half a dozen of us at Riverside City College that agree on a suspect, Ross Sullivan. She lists some reasons here. She talks about Ross as being unsocial, didn't talk much to anyone. He wore the same type of clothing all the time. He was not around the day after the murder. It wasn't until a few weeks before he reappeared back at school and he had on a totally new set of clothes. Didn't have his army coat, didn't have his boots. I mean, you throw it away, you get rid of the evidence. Is he disguising himself now? 
This behavior totally arouses my suspicion. That's a sign of somebody that could be guilty of murder. We need to find out more about this guy. Sal and Ken have identified a man named Ross Sullivan as their prime suspect in the 1966 murder of Sherry Jo Bates. With striking similarities between the Bates slaying and the Zodiac attacks, could Ross Sullivan have been the Riverside killer and later become the Zodiac? What's going on? Ross Sullivan worked at that library where Sherry Jo Bates was last seen, and he had access to code books. How does his uh, physical description match up with the, what we know about the Zodiac? It fits well. Um, heavy set guy, probably between 200 and 250. I mean, he wore like a military uh, type blues. We need you to see if there's a link to Zodiac. OK, we will do. Let's dig in and investigate this guy, Ross Sullivan. Anyone who writes a cipher is going to leave invisible fingerprints on the cipher that come from their life experience or their training. So if we can learn more about the background of Ross Sullivan, that will help us to try to establish connections between him and the code. Hey guys, check this out. Ross Sullivan was at this address in Santa Cruz. There's a city directory that had his listing in there. He was a food service employee. He lived in an apartment at that address. Ross Sullivan relocated from Riverside to Santa Cruz in Northern California in 1968. All of Zodiac's confirmed murders occurred between 1968 and 1970 within 100 miles of Santa Cruz. What else can we add to this? Check this out. This is an ad for a stationery store right down the road from where Ross lived. It's called Palace Stationers. The interesting thing about this ad is it talks about a new item that arrived in their store. Exciting new Zodiac stationery. Really? Wow. But nobody has actually you know, made the connection between Zodiac and the stationery store. Well, so far, the only connection is the fact that Ross Sullivan lived, Just lived near, like, near very, very close to it. Yeah, it's interesting circumstantial evidence. I would like to know how many ads this stationery store placed. How much material do we have to work with? And maybe ties into Zodiac. This is another ad that ran for this stationery store. Look how they've written the title of the store. Like the Paradise Slaves. Zodiac wrote on the Halloween card. On October 27th, 1970, the Zodiac Killer mailed a Halloween card to the San Francisco Chronicle containing the words Paradise Slaves, arranged in a mysterious cross pattern. That's really interesting. I mean, look, both words start with a P vertically and an S horizontally and intersect at an A. The crosswood, same style. It's quite interesting. Is that a hint to the order that we need to trace the path through the 340? Where we might have vertical words and horizontal words that share a common symbol? That's definitely worth looking into. This cross pattern technique strongly resembles the L shapes the team uncovered in the Zodiac Z340 cipher. Oh, one of the other interesting things is this article that ran about a performance of the Mikado in Santa Cruz. We know that the Zodiac wrote about the Mikado, the Gilbert and Sullivan opera. The Zodiac sent multiple letters to the press quoting this opera set in Japan, starring a main character named the Executioner. The article talks about where you can buy the tickets for the show. And guess what? Palace Stationers is listed there. You can go to Palace Stationers to get your Zodiac stationery, your Mikado tickets. For what it's worth, seems like a one-stop shop for Zodiac paraphernalia. And Ross Sullivan lived very close to it. This is a big breakthrough. Ross Sullivan could have gotten ideas from the stationery store that would actually inspire him to become the Zodiac. Now we're linking Zodiac to Riverside, Riverside to Ross Sullivan, and Ross Sullivan back to Zodiac. That's a huge step forward to figure out how the cipher was constructed, and then we can use that to deconstruct it and solve it. That's the end goal. And without a doubt, we got the best chance of solving this ever. Next time on The Hunt for the Zodiac Killer. Riverside is looking so much like Zodiac. Now we have a suspect, Ross Sullivan. Look at that, Sal. That could be Zodiac's DNA. There are so many indicators that he has technical expertise. It's a homicide. It's an unsolved homicide. What's going on with Santa Barbara County Sheriff's? Why won't they talk to us about this case? It's a symbol right here. In the letter, he says the map coupled with this code will tell you where the bomb is set. 
Mount Diablo. What we're looking at are two separate bombs here. We need to get it out of here before it injures somebody. Roger that, buddy. 